Okay, enjoy them. They're really good. Amen. 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 I'd like to greet you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, there's a scripture in Corinthians. It says that there are many gifts in the world, but each and every gift is meant to glorify God. Amen. So, yeah, we hope that you enjoy our singing. And, yeah, we just want to bless you. Amen. song. I sing the song with all of my heart. With all of my heart. With all of my soul. With all of my soul. With all of my strength. With all of my strength. I give you. I give you the praise. You're the one. You're the one. The love. You're the source of my joy. You're the source of my joy. You're the giver of life. The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. You're the one. You're the one. The love. You're the source of my joy. You're the source of my joy. You're the giver of You're love. You're the giver of love. The Prince of Peace. The Prince Come on, somebody. Peace. I love you. I love you. I really do. I really do. You are the risen. With all of my heart. With all of my heart. With all of my soul. With all of my soul. With all of my strength. With all of my strength. I give you. I give you the praise. You're the one. You're the one. The love. You're the source of my joy. You're the source of my joy. You're the giver of life. You're the giver of life. The prince of peace. The prince of peace. You're the one. Source of my joy. You're the source of my joy. You're the giver of You're life. The giver of life. The prince of peace. The prince of peace. Come on. I love you. I love you. I really do. I really do. You are the risen. You are the risen. I lift my hands. I lift my hands. With all of my heart. With all my soul. With all of my soul. With all of my strength. With all of my strength. I give you. I give you the
to the Coliseum. Welcome to the Coliseum. We got more than one reason why we, we do the things that we do. They try to cut the street dog and keep it strong like bamboo. I lift my hands and give praises to the power forms. This is the call for all believers just to stand tall. As I close my eyes and begin to visualize as I take my first step behind enemy lines. I need the strength of to die cause it's now or never. Face my enemies in the Coliseum and I'm the gladiator. And the first rival part of my own nature wasn't a problem cause I could always handle it. One punch, one block, one counter, that's it. Now who's got the next match? I got a battle for it. And with that, the mood changes as the stock gets darker. My punks rate one and up. Hearts heavy, my blood's thicker. I know this feeling too well cause I felt it before. And the last time I felt it, it took all for me to knock it down to the floor. Do your man come to the Coliseum. Where the weapons that we fight but they're not of the sword. Welcome to the Coliseum. For the king that suffers violence and we take it by force. Welcome to the Coliseum. Spirit and flesh at war. Better check the score. Thank you to the Funanani team. Now, regardless of where they work or where they get involved, our idea really is, and 
what the Lord laid on Rina's heart is to get people to work in schools. You see, if we don't open up doors, uh, the Muslims will put imams in all the schools. They're ready to do it any time. And that's why we have a responsibility in terms of this nation. We want this nation to be a God-fearing nation. And we have a part to play. And because of the vision that the Lord has given us, is can a nation come back to God and your answer will determine your involvement? That's why we're involved. I will ask that Abel come, because we are also for Nani. But not only do they do the curses, but Abel will do it by Target Life. For us, we learn young people to take a look at the life of their And Abel does a phenomenal work of Target Life. Come on, we're not a few thoughts. Okay. Good evening. The first thing I want to say to the, uh, apart from welcome to the students from Amalodi, is uh, I may have been the, um, the guy who wrote down the curriculum, but I, I do believe that the Holy Spirit over 16 years has been the author of this process. And I think it's a fantastic process if you really give yourself to it and you submit to it, the Lord will really come and change your life. And I think it's really effective discipleship and uh, it's wonderful that you guys really have an outreach opportunity that we don't have, that you can actually learn and immediately start giving again and just bless you in that. In that. I will go for Michelle Kans here. She was last year a student geweest in this year. She is a student leader. The year after your, well, in our case, uh, uh, target life year, you get a new perspective. It seems like you just get the information in the first year and then during the second year, as you start applying it, it, you really see what you've gotten and how fantastic this really is and what God has really done in your life. So I can only tell you how many words you have to say. Thank you, Oval. Good um, evening. So this is my actually so great pleasure for us to stand when I was safe. Dat is heel veel goed wat in ons levens gebeur, wat ons, wat eigenlijk wonderwerk is, wat ons hier erg ooit um, vir soveel mense kan sê nie. So, ek denk, vir my is Target Life definitief een van die wonderwerke wat in my leven gebeur het. Um, Toe ek laas jaar een student was in Target Life, um, het ek ingestap en ek, ek het een verhouding met die heren gehad, maar dit was nie eerst naast in my, soos die verhouding wat ek vandag met hom het nie. En dit het my net geleer dat ons soveel is wat ons nog kan leer en ons gaan altijd aan jou leer en Um, dat het so voorig is om deel te kan wees van iets waar jy rechtig um, mense sy harte kan sien, mense wat rechtig een passie het um, om die heren te dien. So vir my was dit een voorig om dit te sien laas jaar en um, jy wil net, net te besef dat ons elke net soveel potentiaal wat so diep binnen in ons sit, wat ons hier van bewus is nie en um, om net bykie die tyd te vat om, om dit te gaan soek daar binnen en uithaal en, en te besef dat ons rarig soveel meer en hoe die heren jou kan gebruik en om een boldness te hebben um, om dat hy jou kan gebruik daar buiten. Um, so, toe ek nou hierdie jaar as die studentenleier um, aanblij, was dit <laughs> was toch als uitdaging vir my geweest, want jy, jy stap uit en dan denk jy, ah, oh, kijk, het baie geleer, maar ek weet nog steeds nie rarig baie nie en ek is nog nie helemaal seker vir so'n wat, wat alles in my steek nie maak, ek weet dat ek uh, roeping het en ek weet dat die heren dier my wil werk en in hierdie jaar as studentenleier het ek, ja, ek het hier op soveel nieuwe maniere gesien en, en in die studenten net om te kan liefjes vir iemand en um, om een paard met hulle te stap in verhouding te hee, um, dat is so groot vir ek en ek is opgewonde om volgende jaar as ek nou moet, moet uitgaan, ek, ek moet hierdie jaar ongelukkig met ek daar het laat groet, <laughs> maar um, om uit te gaan en, en daar so waar ek is weer so iets te beleef, so familie te beleef, um, Ja, ek, ek kan net ewig dankbaar wees vir die, vir die geleendheid en vir die heren dankie sê dat hy ja, so, so, so hard in ons even zaak en redig net een um, plan het met elkeen van ons. So, ja. It's, a, it's such a privilege. Um, just in Target Life itself, we've seen hundreds of young people go through the course and lives really radically changed. And we are seeing some of them that's been there way back eight years ago. Uh, how much they are really doing for the Lord in wherever they are. And um, I can also say that, that God is teaching us every year new things. And uh, just this last week I shared some new things. And that will find its way into the curriculum for next year. That will also be available to you guys. 
Um, God has been really faithful to lead us in this, and I do believe this thing has an amazing potential. And um, I always felt in my heart that uh, this must go out to other cultures and also to townships, but I also realized that it's not my gifting. And then God sent Rina and um, Trevor, and I could just see their hearts was on fire to do this thing, and I could just give this whole curriculum to them. They are matured Christians. They could immediately see uh, what we're aiming at, and uh, I think you guys have the privilege to have leaders that are just pouring out their hearts, and I hope you appreciate it. And uh, then there's amazing power in words, and I just ask everybody to just agree with me, and I just want to speak blessing over the Funanani team and say, may this team go from strength to strength and grow from glory to glory, but you are just the pioneers of this thing. After you, many other students are going to come, and I just want to speak you know, over this thing that it will really grow to glorify God, and guys, this country really needs you to take what God has for you, to find your purpose and really go and live it radically. You know, there's a difference between, ex there's a difference between extreme and radical. Extreme is unbalanced, but radical means well-rooted. Okay, so be well-rooted and bless you. Wonderful. We're going to stand together. We're going to read a portion of scripture together, so let's stand. Sometimes we stand just out of respect for the word of God. If I can just have that portion in the book of Samuel, 2 Samuel on the screen. Ons gaan dit in Afrikaans lees, maar dan gaan ek in Engels bedien. So as jy nie Engels kan praat nie, of Afrikaans kan praat nie, welkom. Een dag gaan ons dit in die hemel praat. Ek weet nou nie so nie, maar... Dis maar een stelling wat ons maak. Kom ons lees dit saam. En David het gesê, is daar nog iemand oor van die huis van Saul, dat ek aan hom gins kan bewys terwille van Jonathan. En die huis van Saul het een dienaar gehad met die naam van Sibba, en hulle het om na David geroep, en die koning het om gevra, is jy Sibba? Toe antwoord hy, jy dienaar. En die koning vra, is daar nog iemand van die huis van Saul, dat ek die gins van God aan hom kan bewys nie. Toe sê Sibba aan die koning, daar is nog een seen van Jonathan, wat lam is in al twee voete. En die koning vraag hom, waar is hy? Toe sê Sibba aan die koning, kyk, hy is in die huis van Magir, die seen van Amiheel in Lodibar. Daarop het die koning David gestuur, en hom laat haal uit die huis van Magir, die seen van Amiheel uit Lodibar. Toe Mephibose die sien van Jonathan, die sien van Saul by David inkom, het hy op sy aangesig geval en om neergebuig. En David het gesê, Mephibose het, en hy het geantwoord, hier is die dienaar. En David sê, vir hom wees nie bevrees nie, want ek sal jou sekerlik gins bewys, ter wille van jou vader Jonathan, en al die grond van jou vader Saul, aan jou teruggegee, as jy self sal altyd deur, om my tafel te gee brood eet. Toe buig hy en sê, wat is die dienaar, dat hy na een dooie hond soos ek is, omgesien het. En die koning het Sibba, die dienaar van Saul, geroep, vir hom gesê, alles wat Saul in sy hele huis gehad het, gee ek aan die seen van jou Heer. En jy moet vir hom die grond bewerk, jy en jou seens en jou slawe, en jy moet voedsel inbring, dat die seen van jou Heer brood het om te eet. Maar, Mephibose, die seen van jou Heer, sal altyd deur aan my tafel brood eet, en Sibba het 15 seens en 20 slawe gehad. Toe sê Sibba aan die koning, net soos my Heer die koning sy dienaar beveel, so sal die dienaar doen, en Mephibose het het in die tafel van David geëet, soos een van die koning sy seens. Dankie vader vir die woord, ek in jou sit plek neem. Before we do something, we've got wonderful CDs available. Wow, hits 215, 30 of today's top Christian artists. And uh, I don't want you just to come. If you sense the Lord says it's yours, then you come and take it. And then if you can't afford a book, Yanni De Beer gave his testimony this morning, and somebody came with a signature 
of Yanni de Beer here and sewed the book. So if you can't afford one, but you'd like one, he has a book and you can come and fetch it. Anytime, if you sense the Lord says, I'm not going to argue with you and uh, you're going to respond to what the Holy Spirit says. I want to minister a short word and let's trust that it'll be short on the concept of Lodi Bar. In Afrikaans gaan ek sê, laat vol, maar begenadig. In Engels kon ek nie selwe woorde kry nie, dropped, but remembered. In this portion of the story, we read about two characters. One is King David and one Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth, jy sikkel om my naam te sê. Wat die klein sien van koning Saul was, maar die sien van David. The story is about stress and change. Mephibosheth was in a respected position and possibly an heir to the throne. He knew honor, but now he's in Lodibar, a position of hopelessness, frustration, and fear. It's a story of covenant friendship. It's a wonderful story of promises, of grace, of God's love, of tenderness, of forgiveness, and of hope. King David is an expression of the goodness of God that will pick you and me up when we fall. That's why in the book of Acts, Acts 13, 22, we read an incredible scripture there. If they can just have that on the screen, please. In Acts 13, 22, and when he had disposed him, he raised up David to be their king. Of him he bore witness and said, I found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will and carry out my program fully. Just want to stop there for a moment. You see, the call of God on your life is what God has for you, the mandate He has for you. And the man or the woman after God's own heart is the person who says, Lord, that's what you're telling me. Regardless of the money that I'm offered, regardless of the position that I have, I want to fulfill that mandate that you have for me and be a man or a woman after God's own heart. When we think of David, we think of a man who killed a lion. He killed a bear and he killed Goliath. But what about David tending the sheep? And while he was tending the sheep, the Lord sent Samuel to anoint a new king. And David's dad forgot about him. What happens when your own father forgets about you? He just forgot to call him. But David learned a wonderful lesson. Although his dad had forgotten him, he didn't forget that he had a friend, Jonathan, and that he had a covenant relationship with Jonathan. Now, in those days, when a new king was crowned, what the people would do so that the king wouldn't have opposition, they'd go, the soldiers, the moment the king died, they'd come to the city and kill all the king's relatives, kill everybody, so that the king would not be opposed. And can you imagine what happened when these messengers came and they came running and said, Saul and Jonathan have died on the field. And what happened is the servant who looked after Mephibosheth grabbed him because she feared for his life. And as she ran, whether she ran downstairs, the Bible doesn't say, but she dropped Mephibosheth and he broke both his legs. But she ran for fear with him because at least he was alive. Now it must have been that his legs grew on crookedly because a place like Lodibar, there was nothing. Now this young man, he'd done nothing wrong. He paid a big price for somebody else's mistake. And that's what I really want you to hear. Sometimes people make a mistake in leadership. They make the wrong decision and it affects you. What would you do? In our lives, we can have well-meaning people that drop you. They disappoint you. They hurt you. They say or do the wrong thing. Now, perhaps your parents worked very hard. They had to put bread on the table. They were not always there. And when you needed them, they were not there for you. Or perhaps you needed them and they were there, but they were busy with their own problems. Perhaps a drinking problem. 
perhaps too much work. And they were not just there for you. Your dad and your mom both perhaps lost their work. And you were in a desperate situation. Perhaps the bad drinking habit meant that your dad always cursed you. That's Yanni De Beer's testimony. He got an interdict against his father because he wanted nothing to do with his father. And then he went and forgave his father. But his father, when he forgave him, he said, the father said, you left me with all the guilt for what I'd done wrong. And 10 years later, Yanni went and said, forgive me, dad, for not understanding what you went through because you had a drinking problem, not understanding that liquor was dictating to you. And that brought a restoration and brought his father back. Now, you've got a low self-image because of that. Or you've experienced rejection, and now you suffer with depression. These things can cripple you. Mephibosheth came from a royal bloodline, and now he was in Lodibar. Lodibar was one of the poorest and neglected cities of its day. Not only that, Lodibar was a place of frustration, of irritation, and desperation. Most of the inhabitants were very poor. They got hurt or they were fleeing for their lives because of the change of kingship. Lodibar was a place where problems were magnified. And perhaps you're in a situation and you say, problems are magnified to me. Perhaps you can identify. And you say, you know, I'm right there now. Problems seem so much bigger. You were abused. You were mistreated. People misused you. People cheated you. Perhaps in business. Perhaps in a relationship. Perhaps in friendship. Perhaps a partner dropped you. And now you've got to deal with the humiliation. You've got to deal with the shame. Perhaps you were also cheated. Cheated because you made a mistake. You made a mistake in your judgment. And you got cheated out of what God had for you because you thought and you thought wrong. If you read the life of Job, he thought wrong. And because of that, he feared. Now, out of weakness, somebody might make a mistake. Out of my weakness, I can make a mistake towards my children. Or there was a lack of knowledge like Adam and Eve. Eve said, and it's interesting in the Hebrew, he says, the snake, she says, the snake beguiled me. It cheated me. The snake outwitted me. The snake deceived me. And perhaps you were deceived. And you're the one who caused the hurt. You didn't mean to, but you caused the hurt. Now like Adam and Eve, you feel ashamed. And you think, I'm just not good enough. I, I just don't measure up. I don't measure up to people's standards or to God's standards. Well, in this life, I want to say that you must know this. You won't go very far in this life without somebody dropping you, without that happening to you. That's why Ephesians 6.11 comes. And he says in the Amplified Bible, if we can just have that on the screen. Ephesians 6.11 says, speaks about putting on the, 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 the weaponry of the Lord. It seems like they have a problem at the back there. And then it says, because the enemy has wiles, he has schemes. Now, sometime in life, you'll be dropped like Mephibosheth. It could be that you get dropped by sickness. Why did this sickness come to me? I sat with two children this morning. They walked into the room when father had a heart attack and died in front of them. Had a funeral on Friday where they were sitting and eating, and this young woman of 33 gets an asthma attack and dies in front of her family. It could be a divorce. It could be a partner who made a promise and that partner dropped you. A brother or a sister. Oh, I serve the Lord and I really serve the Lord and the person never served the Lord. He served their own interest. It could be a friend, a colleague who turned against you. You thought it was good, but when the position for promotion came, the colleague began to talk negatively of you because of that you might have lost your job. And now you feel that 
Life is not worth it. You know, you wonder if you could ever get up again. Now David said in Psalm 30, 40 verse 2 and 3, He drew me out of the horrible pit, a pit of tumult and destruction, out of the miry clay. That's the froth and slime. That means it was dead stuff. And he set my feet upon a rock, steadying my steps and establishing my goings. Isn't that incredible? incredible? And he has put a new song in my mouth. Tonight I'm trusting that if you were dropped, the Lord will put a new song, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and fear, rever and worship and put their trust and confidence in the Lord. You see, the enemy thought it was the end of your story. He thought this was the end of your story. I cannot tell you how I sometimes never forget a professor coming to me and saying to me when I went to Pochefstrom, he said, I've missed my life's calling. I wanted to please my mother, so I did what my mother wanted. Now I'm a professor in what my mother wanted. And he's crying like a baby. You see, but something changes. But God, but God, he's the lifter of your head. He will draw you out of the miry clay. He will put your feet on the rock to stay. And now you can go forward. You can't do this on your own. You can't do it by yourself. If the Lord doesn't help you, you can't. He will take you to a new level. Trust Him. He'll give you new opportunities, new friends, new joy, new health, new fulfillment. The Lord comes. He's the lifter of our head. God is a loving and gracious God. And He wants to give back to you what the enemy stole from you. In Christ is the key. Whenever you look in the book of Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, in Christ, in Christ you and I, I are royalty. Isn't that incredible? In Him, you are royalty. In Him, we have an inheritance. I love so Proverbs 8.21. It says, Trust I may cause those, uh, or that I may cause those who love me to inherit true riches, and that I may fill their treasures, that I may fill their treasures. Then in Ephesians 3 verse 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of the promise of Christ through the Gospels. You see, we thought the promises were for the Jews only, but that the Gentiles, that includes you and me. So if you've experienced a loss, Perhaps you've been dropped. Perhaps you've been discouraged. The Lord wants to come tonight and encourage you. Get ready for increase. God has seen every tear. He's seen every pain, every heartache. When you were crying and saying, why did this happen to me? I thought they were for me and now they're against me. And now you wonder because the person who did you wrong. But God is a God of justice. And he says in Romans 12, 19, Beloved, I'm going to read it in English. You can follow it in Afrikaans there. Do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. It's not that, Lord, get my dad back. And that's the incredible testimony of Yanni's life. Not get my dad back because he gave me a hard time is how do I get my dad back? How do you get back what God has for you? When the nation of Israel was in slavery, God said, I'm coming down to pick you up again. And he did that. He picked them up. Know this. You are a prized son and daughter of God. And if you've been dropped, God wants to pick you up. Believe that. Believe that God wants to pick you up. Sometimes we can't believe. I battled when my wife and I began to serve the Lord a year after we got married. I cried for three, three years, virtually through every service, because I saw what the enemy had stolen from me and what the Lord wanted to give me back. Now Mephibosheth thought that nobody cared. Nobody remembered him. 
There he's in Lodibar, a place that's a place of desperation. Everybody there was poor, was down and out. And he says, I'm forgotten and the things will never change. God doesn't know about me. But God never forgets. I love Isaiah 49, verse 15 and 16. And the Lord answered, can a woman forget her nursing child? That she should not have compassion on the son of her womb. Yes, they may forget. Yet I will not forget you. And then he says, behold, I've indelibly imprinted, tattooed a picture of you on the palm of each of my hands, O Zion. Your walls are continually before me. And I don't know about you, but I have this picture of the Lord looking on, on his hands. And, you know, we, we can't measure eternity and the size of our God because on a computer you press a knob and God has a picture, two pictures of you on the palm of each of his hands. Now, the Lord is wanting to say to you, I haven't forgotten I want you to see it like this. David perhaps was sitting in the palace. He's now king. Saul and Jonathan are dead. And David remembered he had a covenant with Jonathan. And I can, uh, I imagine the Holy Spirit when he was thinking of covenant whispered in his ear, ask them if there's anybody alive so I can show them mercy. So he asks, or any of Saul's relatives left i want you to know tonight that there could be somebody come across your path because the holy spirit whispered in his ear to come towards you you will not know man came to me this morning he said i've lost my work but they came to me and approached me from a company in america and they've given me a job i'm blown out of the water from nowhere the offer came now, the Lord wants you to know that he knows. God is a covenant God. I want to explain covenant. Covenant is where God the stronger comes to the weaker, and he cuts covenant with you and me, the weaker. Covenant says, you don't deserve it. You can't earn it. But you declare God's covenant over your life. God, perhaps I'm in Lodibar, a place desolate, forgotten, but you haven't forgotten. You see, declare that God is El Shaddai, El Almighty, Shad, the broad-breasted, many-breasted God, who is more than enough. He's sufficient. That means enough to meet the need of any given situation, situation, and that through the Lord Jesus Christ, he's not forgotten you. God whispers in someone's ear. All of a sudden, you have a break. You have a new contract, you have an opportunity where somebody comes and offers you something. So don't be discouraged. Justice is coming. Restoration is coming. A new beginning, a new opportunity. That's part of target life. That's part of Funanani. When they came looking for Mephibosheth, I wonder how it was. Fear must have gripped him. Eventually, they found me. Now they're coming, I'm a cripple, but they're coming to kill me. But they were not coming to kill him. Be bringing him to David. Imagine living where he was. His hair was not kept. His clothes were dirty. He was a cripple. And they brought him before the king. And he says to the king, what interest do you have in me, a dead dog? But why would David show mercy to Mephibosheth? Because King Saul persecuted David and tried to kill him. Why would David show mercy? You see, we've got to understand, David, a man after God's own heart, God, what do you want me to do? And sometimes when you ask, that's when the Lord whispers in your ear and something starts to happen in your life. Now Mephibosheth says, I'm just a dead dog. But David says, I'm giving you back all the property that belonged to your grandfather. And I'm going to give you servants and slaves to serve you. You come and sit at my table until your days are over. I will restore to you what God wants you to have. 
and you sit here at my table. I want to conclude in Luke 19, verse 10. Incredible scripture. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. In that is those who were lost. He came looking for you. And I want you to know tonight, he looks for you. And perhaps you feel, I've been dropped. Somebody disappointed me. And just now, I'm going to invite you to come forward. We have a wonderful team. Perhaps some of the team might come forward because you've been disappointed. I want you to tell, to tell you, even if you were dropped, he hasn't forgotten you. And we're going to ask the team to come and anoint you with oil. And I really believe God's going to give you back what the enemy stole from you. Because the story is in the Bible to say that you remembered even if you were dropped. And sometimes when you were dropped, you felt so hurt. And you're holding on to that hurt. And you don't know what the other person went through who dropped you. Family Foundations International from Yanni De Beer. When he was prepared to go and say to his father, forgive me, he picked up his father from the street, from a drunken tramp, and his father's restored. He has his own business paid for. He has a place to stay and cars that God provided for him because there was somebody who, when he heard the word of God, said, I'm there to go and pick up my broken dad, pick up somebody that got hurt. Let's stand together. And if you really sense the Lord speaking to you, I really want you to come out for ministry because we're going to have the team minister and then we're going to close the service. Even now, while I'm speaking, won't you just come forward and say, Neville, I was really dropped. I really got hurt. You might be a very prominent person, but you got hurt and that, that hurt is, is turning around in your heart. And you can't go forward. This morning in the English congregation, there's a woman been saved for many years. And I said, I sense a stirring in somebody's spirit. And there was this tremendous stirring. She came out and I said, it's not demonic. I said, I see you being born. Your mother didn't want you. She says, my mother told me she didn't want me. She says, my family doesn't want me. My own children don't want me. I said to her this morning, it's a change in your life. Your life is going to change because he hasn't forgotten. You see, you got dropped, but you're not forgotten. I know this is sensitive, but I really sense to come and minister because that's the idea for Target Life and Funanani. Let's pick people up so that they can go and pick people up. There's a hurting world around there. So if you need to come forward, I just want you to step out. Allow the Lord to really come and restore you tonight. And we're going to close this service. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. The worship team would just come. We're going to close this service in this song. And you can come and stand in front. You might be a person who's gone through. He said, my whole life was perfect. Understand. But along the road. I want to make a radical statement. In white community, we don't understand how many people in our black community have been dropped. Perhaps because of politics. Perhaps because of a drinking problem. But really, I, I sense tonight, and there are more people that need to come. Because God wants to restore you. You see, He hasn't forgotten. He hasn't forgotten. He knows he understands. Thank you. Let's just take a tender chorus before we close the service. And as they go ministering, we're you going to visit with one another for a while. We're going to worship because then the people who are going to be baptized will come to the back. The men will go to that side to get undressed. The women will go to that side to get undressed. Thank you. Okay, and all the people that get baptized tonight. Afterwards, if you'll just go to the mother's room, 
is they want to pray for you for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And as they start ministering in front, and you sense, you say, I'm 70, 80 years old. And I sense a stirring in my heart to come. Come forward. When I was preparing the word, I really had an encounter with the Lord. Thank you. Let it be Jesus, the first name that I call. Let it be Jesus. The ministry team can come. A song inside the storm. Never need another for me to love is Christ for me to love. die Heere jou vanavond in die dienst toe gebring, omdat jy dat iemand moet gaan optel. Sien iets gebeur in die mense hart, as het nie gaan oor my nie. As het gaan, oor Heere is daar iemand wat dat seer het. Vanochtend kom een vrou in die dienst, en ek stap na haar te sê, is die eerste keer hier, toe ek by haar kom, toe sien ek, hoe een kind weggeloop het, En hierdie vrou is in ontzettende toestand. Die kind het weggeloop en onmiddellik gee die Heere my woord van kennis en kan ek haar bedien. Wanneer ek en jy beskikbaar is, te sê Heere, wie is wat val? Kan ek iemand daak ergens optel? Dis waar oor dit gaan. Uit ons liefde vir mekaar. 
uit ons liefde voor die wereld, zal hulle weet, dat ons sy disciples is. Halleluja. Dank je Vader. Dank je Vader. Ons gaan net so nog zacht aan bidding wees vir een rikkie, dan sluit ons die dienst, Als je wil gaan, is je welkom, dan gaan ons onmiddellijk begin, Als die doopkandidaten net zo so lang uitgetrek het, dat hulle gereed is, dat ons hulle kan doop. Dank je Heer.